The pursuit of abundant life without Jesus, it's interesting. It results in a couple of things that the enemy loves, by the way. You pursue abundant living apart from Jesus, and it results in pride and fear, and combinations of both, where either you are pursuing abundant life and you have some measure of success, and then you get proud in your own accomplishments, or you are fearful that you're not experiencing all the life that you, know, you possibly could, and so you're concerned about this, and then, it, you know, and then the combination of two, when a proud person is fearful, it's a train wreck. And the enemy of our souls loves it when we try to pursue meaningful life, abundant living, apart from the greatness of God. He's come to kill, steal, and destroy. And to pursue life apart from Jesus is perfect for the cause of Satan. He loves it. He loves it if our lives are plagued with pride. He loves it if we walk through our days fearful of the future. Only Jesus brings abundant life. It's only Christ who brings it. He's the, one, he's the giver of this gift, and it is a gift. And for you to experience, you can experience it today. And so I, I want to give you a picture. I mean, what, what does it look like? What does abundant living look like? If it's not, you know, vibrant and full, I mean, it is those things. Meaning and purpose, it is those things. If it's not the way the world pursues it, what does it look like for the child of God to experience eternal life and abundant living today? It looks like this. It looks like love and joy and peace which in Galatians 5, of course, are the first three listed there, the fruit of the Spirit, kind of the heart of it. All the rest flow in that list of nine qualities of the fruit of the Spirit. All the rest flow from love and joy and peace. I'd also include faith and, of course, hope. And if you are a person that is experiencing Increasing levels of love and joy and peace. Your faith is and confidence is in God. You have hope for the future. All because you are in a relationship with Jesus. My friends, this is abundant living. This is what Jesus came to bring us. Think of each one. Love. Think of love, right? We love because he first loved us. So you have to understand this at the core. God initiated. God started. He loved us first. And we love him in return. Only because he loved us first, though. If God hadn't loved us first, we would not be able to respond. But because he has, because through Jesus, all of the things that would keep us separated from God are removed, we're able to love him in return. And that love is worship. Happens in this room, happens every day of the week. Abundant living means worship. You're loving God in return for what He has provided, what He is, you know, leading you to. Your work, your daily work becomes an expression of love and worship to God because He's the one that enables you to do it. This love spills over. We we end up loving other people. And Jesus even talked about loving enemies. If you get to a place where you can love your enemy, you are abundantly living. I mean, you have vibrant, joyful life. I mean, you, to love your enemies, truly love them, is an amazing thing. And then, in the kingdom of heaven, what's also awesome that we don't think about as quickly, but do you realize that in the kingdom of heaven, in the church of Jesus, at Norkenzie, you can fully expect that the people in the body of Christ are gonna love you. You love them. We share, we're brothers and sisters in Christ, but you walk in a kingdom where it's, it's daily experience where you receive love from them. And the things that Christ-following people do for one another just as, as love, you, you won't find it other places because we're so selfish, egocentric, but in the kingdom of heaven, it's different. Love is this beautiful expression of abundant living. This unselfish, sacrificial kind of love. We receive it, we give it. And then joy is a natural. A joy is a domino that falls because of love. 
where you like experience this sense of well-being because you are so loved by God. And because of Jesus, you are able to love God and to love others, just like Jesus talked about. And joy is this sense of well-being, sense of grace and happiness. We, we have peace where, you know, what is peace? Well, because God has so loved us, we have peace with God through Jesus. We're at rest. You, you know how great it is? Here's abundant living. When you don't, have, you don't feel any need to justify yourself before God and with other people, this is a huge hurdle that many of us still need to figure out. And we jump the hurdle, and then we find ourselves on the other side of it needing to get over this hurdle again. Where because of what God has done for us in Jesus, because of the grace of God demonstrated at the cross, we do not have to justify ourselves before God. He has justified us through the blood of Jesus. And he has wiped clean our record. He has paid the debt. And we are free. We are at peace. And when you're a person who is at peace with God, it's much, you could be at peace with other people, even the ones that are barking in your ear, even the ones that are saying things that are unkind or untrue. You still remain this sense of peace because you don't have to justify yourself before God and certainly not before them. You are God's child. Love, joy, and peace. You come to faith, I think of faith as just having confidence. It's like you live your life like confident that God is able to do this thing. Sometimes I doubt, you know, my ability to follow. Sometimes I doubt, you know, my flesh clamors for things. Sometimes I'm like not so sure. But faith says God has done it. Faith says my confidence is in Jesus. Faith says on the cross, what did he say? It is finished. And I can entrust myself to this Savior who is more than able to accomplish his will and his work in my life and in this church. Faith is confidence. And then hope, of course, is just to say, our lives, which are eternal, you have an eternal life. Your soul is eternal. It will live on past this earthly experience. Hope says, I, I can entrust my eternal soul to the one who made me, the one who has saved me, the one who is patient with me and recreating me into the image of Jesus. And when I see him face to face, whatever distance there is where I'm not quite like him yet, he, by his grace, is going to make up the difference and I'm going to spend eternity right, serving and worshiping this great God who loves me so. Hope says, I can entrust myself to this God and Savior. This is what abundant living looks like. And we could go on and on, right? That's why we read the scriptures. That's why devotionally we take in God's word because there's so many aspects of this abundant life. But here's some foundational ones for you. And I want to say that Jesus is the only one who can provide this. He's the only one who gives life. 